Hey, what's up guys? This is Church of Caboose, and for today's Destiny 2 video, we are going over a full guide on how to beat the Pit of Heresy dungeon solo. I've just managed to beat it. Doing endgame things like this by myself has always been a huge weak point for me, and honestly, this is the first time I've been able to actually succeed at doing something like a dungeon or really anything that's endgame but by myself. So I thought if I could do this, then I should make a guide so that way hopefully you guys can do do this as well if you are curious as to why i went about this dungeon solo it's associated to the harbinger title which i should have done in a couple of days i've been working my way through the titles all i will have left now will be conqueror and chronicler which unfortunately i can't get chronicler so it'll just be conqueror will be left to be my last title so if you guys do enjoy this video make sure you click the like button as well as subscribe to my channel for more contents like this and just destiny content in general now, I have noticed from the analytics that 91%, it's like 90.8 specifically, of you guys are not subscribed to my channel. How dare you! Make sure, so make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel if you hit 600 subscribers by october 20th i'm going to do like a compilation video of my dog if we hit a thousand subscribers by november 20th i'm going to do kind of like a dog toy box opening thing if you guys want to see more videos of her past videos that i've uploaded on my channel have a little clip of her so feel free to check that out otherwise she is the logo for my youtube channel so there you go now you see what she looks like she's absolutely adorable and one last note i really want to thank Redcon 1. I recently became an affiliate with them. I highly suggest you guys try out their product called War Games. I used it while doing this uh, this solo dungeon attempt or in slash completion and I really felt it. I think it helped me out a ton. So if you guys want to try it out for yourself, I have a link in the description box as well as a, as a discount code. If you use either one of those options, you'll get 20% off. Highly suggest you guys check this out. So now we're going to go ahead and get on in to this actual video. It is worth noting that we're going to start off with a couple of really broad things that will help out as you guys are doing this and then we'll go encounter by encounter starting with the second encounter because the first one like doesn't need a whole lot of specific stuff um kind of what i did that really helped me out so in general make sure you guys are going really slow take your time very few things actually have a time limit factor to it the, the two exceptions to that would be in the third encounter you have to have at least um that the little streaker husk type thing dealio you have to kind of be around that base enough to make sure it doesn't wipe you and then when you do the boss damage you do have a limited amount of time to do damage the rest of it you can take your sweet time so that's really really important i struggle with that a lot and that was, I think that's really worth mentioning. Then the other thing is you guys want to make sure whatever class you are running, you are trying to focus on healing things. So if that is a Titan, you probably want to look at maybe using Phoenix Cradle and Sunspots or using a bubble and having a high focus on things that will get you your bubble back as soon as possible. If you're on a Hunter, Invis is super duper handy because you can grab things, go invisible, get out of the way. Works fantastically. Tether is really good. But for Warlock, which is what I did this whole dungeon with, I strongly suggest using Co the Devour, which is Bomb Tree Void, for pretty much all of it. You could use Well for some parts, and doesn't matter a whole lot, but Devour, where health matters, by far was what really, really helped me to beat this dungeon. Unfortunately, Hunters and, and uh, Titans, you don't have a whole lot of healing things you can do. Hunters, you could use the Worm Crown, Worm Husk, that, that exotic helmet where you dodge, you get some life back. And then Titans, unfortunately, the only option you really have would be Code of the Juggernaut with your melee punch over and over. And that would work fairly well due to the number of Thrall. Just gotta watch out for some of those cursed Thrall. So now that we got kind of that general stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and start off with the more details. So for the first encounter, not a whole lot. I, I'm, as I'm making this guide, I'm kind of assuming you all know how everything works. So just kind of go to the right tower. The main thing I would suggest is going to the area above the tower you're going down to. So that way you can kind of start above. You got an aerial view of the ogres that might be down there. And that really helped me out a lot with clearing out that tower area. And then I would go in. So I do everything I can to get rid of ogres, uh, all the stuff I could 
and I would then drop down and do what I could. Weather Horde worked fantastically for this because you could just put a round or two into an ogre and let it kind of burn out while you get to hide behind cover. And same thing for the other ads. Just kind of lob in a Weather Horde round and just let it do its work. And Or you could switch to like a Gnawing Hunger or whatever else you're going to use and do some additional damage that way. So once you get through that first encounter, don't be too anxious once you get that last disciple. You'll see that green thing pop up when you run to there. It's very easy to accidentally get overwhelmed by ads. And so just do the same things. Try to find some above ground, lob in some wither hordes. The main thing would be to try to kill that yellow bar knight. Once that knight's down, that usually lets you move on to the next area. So now let's go ahead and talk about really the first kind of challenging thing in this whole dungeon, which is the second encounter, which is that ogre hall maze type thing for this maze i would really suggest you guys start on that right hallway that very first one where you have the red walls to the right because if you go to the left like i was suggested to do and i tried it i found myself getting trapped by those ogres and having a very hard time getting into another hallway so if you guys start on that right hallway where the red wall is you go through take your sweet sweet time make sure you kill the ads then you grab that, kill all the ads, kill all of them in that in that area, grab the orb, then you have to wait. And that right hallway is definitely the hardest. You have to grab an orb, wait until you have enough room, because that ogre will kind of leave a little bit. Then you sprint out, run to the next little cove, go in there, wait again, sprint out, run into the next little cove, and do that all the way to the end until you can slam that orb. Now, I do not suggest duping these orbs for this part. I know that's kind of a thing people tend to do i found that to be incredibly difficult for this part because you now have to go into a room with cover and it has you guessed it ads so you might as well just slam that orb then go into that next room for the middle area kill all those ads grab that orb and then do the same process of using the coves although the second one i was able to run straight to it then slam that second orb then go into the little cove kill all the ads grab that last orb and then go and slam it that's what i would suggest you guys do for the ogre is go right to left so closest hallway and uh, move yourself down towards the farthest away hallway. I think this is drastically easier. It worked very well for me. Now, as far as subclasses and stuff goes, I can't say it matters a whole lot. If you're Warlock, probably stick on Well or Devour. If you're Titan, Bubble would probably be rather nifty, especially if you have Helm of Saint 14. Because if you get into one of those coves and you get surprised rushed by a horde of Thrall, just drop your bubble, whip out your sword, do a heavy attack with Fallen Guillotine, boom. The same thing applies with swords in general throughout this whole raid i highly suggest using swords or excuse me dungeon other than the boss fight because they're really good at taking out those intense rushes of those thralls then hunter same kind of a deal maybe just do tether so you can go invis although uh, it's worth noting on the hunter it is a little bit easier on this part because you can go invis grab the orb and then run as far down as you can until you run out it makes it a lot easier to get around the ogres but personally i think hunter is probably one of the harder classes to do for most of this dungeon. Titan's probably equally as difficult. Warlock's by far gotta be the easiest, like whew, by far. So that kind of wraps up for that second encounter. So we're gonna go ahead and talk now about the third encounter. This encounter by far for me was the hardest. If you guys watched my stream on Twitch, which by the way, I'm at twitch.tv slash church of caboose. I spent probably 80% of my time on this encounter. I really suggest you guys take what I have to say about how to do this uh, very literally. Like I would highly suggest you guys actually do this verbatim, um, if, especially if you're on Warlock. If you're a Titan or a Hunter, maybe the weapons would still work pretty well, but you might have to do a little bit of finagling on the subclass. So the first thing that I think it's worth noting is my gut wanted to do duping the orbs. I honestly thought it'd be the easiest way to do this whole encounter. I was like, this is gonna be over in like 30 seconds no problem but i was completely wrong and not only was it kind of violating my own little video about our exploits ruining the game because i just really wanted to get it over with for the title um, it actually flooded me with insanely more ads and the knights that spawn in this room when you slam an orb you now instead of having two of them have to deal with four of them at the same time and very few people like i'm sure there's folks out there that can do this but i don't think the average joe like myself is going to be able to handle all the ads plus the four knights 
in the amount of time of a well, a bubble, or a tether. So I would highly suggest you guys do not do the duping and do one orb at a time. Now, if you feel particularly good, maybe do two orbs at a time, slam twice, let everyone have to do this three times. I, however, ended up having the highest like percentage, like, like least number of runs when I decided to start doing this legitimately. So I'd highly suggest you guys do this legit. Hopefully some of the footage here kind of showed how hectic it is when I was duping. So now let's go ahead and talk about how did I do this legitimately, like what weapons, that kind of thing. To do this whole encounter legitimately, I would suggest you guys use a mountaintop, trinity ghoul with a catalyst, and a sword. And if you don't have mountaintop, use maybe a sniper or something instead. The point is to have something you can easily deal with those knights that are up above. But I found a sniper to be a little too flinchy, so I went with mountaintop and trinity ghoul. So hopefully you guys are able to find some kind of a thing around that if you do not have mountaintop so i also ran devour so i just consume a grenade get tons and tons of kills with that trinity goal i was constantly getting my health back and that worked really well again i only grabbed one slammed one orb at a time because that made the ads much more manageable it made those knights much more manageable and it was just way easier in general the last thing i suggested you guys run a falling guillotine or some kind of a sword that ideally has something like relentless strikes or whirlwind blade because what you do is you clear out the room as best you can with ads ads are rather continuous so you can never completely get rid of them but you get down to a sizable and manageable number you run to whatever side you're going to be killing that knight on use that sword like one heavy attack with fallen guillotine plus one light attack you usually did it then you grab that orb bring it back slam it clear out all the ads then you do the same thing with that sword just rinse and repeat that six times until you have that encounter cleared so there you go that's what i suggest you guys do i did try doing well on a warlock did not work nearly as well as Devour. Titans, I bet Bubble would be pretty good, especially if you're gonna try and do something like do a couple of orbs and then rapid slam the last three where you're duping. Hunters, I would again imagine uh, invis with a with a uh, top way of the trap or tether with Orpheus rigs would probably be the best best way to go in general. That sword, you guys should all use a sword, something longer ish range that you can easily aim for those knights. Um, and keep in mind, you're gonna get rushed by those little ads, those thralls, those curse thralls a lot. So if you have to be kind of careful, because if you use that sword on a curse thrall, you'll probably blow up. They were killing me even in my well. So make sure you're keeping an eye out. Don't just see red all around you. Do a heavy swing because you might blow yourself up so hopefully that helps you out with that third encounter it's really hard you guys will probably spend a lot of time on it as to me it was about 80 percent of my total run most of the encounters i did in like one or two tries with the exception of the boss fight is like four this encounter took me like an hour by itself so hopefully that helps out now we're going to move on to the next one which is the witch's puzzle for the witch puzzle, again, very similar to the first, nice and slow, take your time, don't be trying to rush, you know there's lots of jumping and mazes, you could look up things like maps to see where all these different things are at, but I don't really think you need to, I didn't do it, it worked out just fine for me. The main thing is go nice and slow. Jotun is really handy for those wizards, so if you happen to have Jotun, slap that son of a bitch on there, you'll probably kill every wizard in about three or four shots of Jotun, and then you get to move on to that boss fight. So let's talk about the last encounter, our good old boss. For the boss fight, you guys could do the duping option or legit. Just keep note, if you do the duping option, then you wanna make sure you have lots of ad control and there is that mini little boss damage phase between your actual damage phases. But again, this is a guide assuming you know how to beat the dungeon, because if you're trying to do this without knowing how to beat it, but you're doing it by yourself, that seems like a weird order to do this in. So if you're doing it either way, make sure you guys are controlling all the ads, because I would suggest clearing out all the ads, whether you're doing it with the dupe, or if you're doing it legit, but dupe, you really, really, really have to clear out all those ads, because otherwise it'll be damn near impossible to do those orbs, because while you're trying to slam that orb, you'll have a massive thrall rush up on your ass and beat you to death, while you're trying to like, oh no, grab my orb or slam it. Like that's, that's just what's gonna happen, because that's what happened to me so then that's what you do you would just do all those three orbs then do boss damage and just do that over and over until you beat the boss i would not expect that you guys are trying to do things like two phasing i had to do i think it was about four maybe five damage phases uh because i missed nova bombs on the first one is really why so what should you guys be using for boss damage i would highly suggest you use oppressive grenades so that way you can then hit with whatever main dps if you're doing warlock i suggest you devour 
So you then slam in that last grenade or that last orb, hop in the damage area, hit him with the oppressive, hit him with the burning nova. And then for weapons, I really enjoy using anarchy. Then you got mountain top, you got like truth teller. So use things ideally that would let you have some range while dealing massive damage. I did not find swords to be very helpful just because you can get stomped or cursed or all, then it's just the mess. So try to use things where you can just drop a bunch of rounds, hop around, float around, whatever, and keep doing damage that way instead of being super stationary. And... He's... Yes! Oh, there's the solo! Oh, yeah! Oh, that's what I'm talking about! Oh! Yeah! And there you go. Those are my tips and I guess the guide for how I went about getting my solo pit of heresy done. Please comment down below if these tips helped you guys out. I'd also like to see who all made it to the end because I know this isn't necessarily a very short video. So comment a chicken emoji for the colonel in the comment section and I'll know that you guys made it to the end. Also, if you need an Xbox community, feel free to join my vengeful Discord server. Links are down below. If it expired, just let me know in the comments section and i'll get you a new one also don't forget to check out redcon one and take a look at their supplements and especially war games i really like that product i think it did a lot for my mental state while getting through this solo pit of heresy and i highly recommend it i have links and such in the description box that will give you 20 percent off at the checkout so make sure you guys look into that again thank you guys all so much for watching i am church of caboose have a great week and happy grinding y'all Oh, 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 oh,